Hello from Book Passage. My name is Mari and I'm one of the booksellers specializing in the children's department. And we are so excited to have you join us today. And we are honored to welcome two amazing um, people that we've gotten to know over the years because of their incredible books. Uh, sisters Sabrina and Eunice Moyle grew up all over the world, um, surrounded by ebullient and thriving Asian pop and craft culture. And their earliest collaborations included everything from imagined children's books to dollhouses and puppet shows. But in 2003, they co-founded the design studio Hello Lucky. And Eunice, one of the sisters, is a gifted illustrator. She develops beautiful tactile prints and Sabrina, a creative entrepreneur, spearheads the business and the writing. We are so excited to share with you their newest book. It is called You Are Fantastic. And on the back, it says it's a joyful tribute to everything that makes you fantastic. And some of my colleagues here at Book Passage thought that when I put this book out for display on our interview table that I was doing a cheerleading for them and all that we've been through <laughs> through, the, through the pandemic. So it is absolutely the perfect book for this time to celebrate all of the things that people have done and to cheer people on. So with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Sabrina and Eunice. Take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Sabrina. And I'm Eunice, hello. And we are, as Mari said, sisters, and we're the co-founders of a company called Hello Lucky. And we also have written a number of children's books. So we are just delighted to be here today to share our brand new book, You Are Fantastic, with you. And before we share it, though, we're just going to tell you a little bit more about who we are, what we do, why we wanted to write this book. Then we're going to read the book. And while we read, Eunice is going to draw so that you can get a sense, a real sneak peek window into what it's like to make a children's book. So you're going to get to watch her drawing. And then she's going to come back and talk about what she drew. And we're going to answer some questions that kids often ask us about how books are made, where we get our ideas and all that good stuff. And then we'll wrap up our little show and tell with you. So we hope you enjoy this. And we're really excited to get to know you and to share our books with you. So just to start out with, as Mari said, Eunice and I are sisters. We grew up all over the world. So we were both born in the United States, but pretty much as soon as we were born, we were whisked away to countries <laughs> in Asia and Africa. So we lived in Myanmar, now formerly known as Burma, which is in Southeast Asia. You might want to pull out a map at some point. <laughs> you can find all these places on the map. Then we lived in Taipei, Taiwan. We lived in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, which is in Southeast Asia. We lived in Beijing, China. We lived in uh, Tripoli in Libya, that's in Northern Africa. So the reason why we traveled all these places is because our dad, who is from Minnesota in the United States, he was working for the US government as a diplomat. So he was in the foreign service. And what that means is that his job was to go out to other countries and represent the United States, to be a friendly face, to get to know people from other countries and other cultures to make friends. And so we, as a result of that, just got so inspired about just the ways in which we all have so much in common all over the world and the ideas of being kind to ourselves as well as kind to people all over, no matter what their background, their skin color, what their, where they grew up, where they live, all those things don't really matter at the end of the day because we are all connected. And that's really something that we kind of got to appreciate. We also got to appreciate all the differences in the cultures where we lived. So every single culture is different. There's so many things that are unique about the people who live in different countries, as well as the way that they celebrate holidays, their traditions, their foods, the way they like to play, do art, music, everything is so different and those differences are awesome so that's some of the inspiration behind our books eunice and i our mom is from taiwan taipei taiwan 
um, which is really cool. And our mom and dad both really inspired us to be super creative. So our mom likes to craft. She likes to quilt <laughs> and sew and cook. And she has an amazing fashion sense. She has the coolest outfits you will ever find. Um, so <laughs> she was always an inspiration to us. And our dad is super corny. He has a really corny sense of humor, which is partly the best, <laughs> the best. Um, and he also loves art. So he loves music and he likes to do printmaking. So we just grew up really feeling like art is so important. Being creative is so important. And so that's why we eventually started our business. Hello, Lucky. Um, so Hello Lucky started out in Eunice's garage because she decided she wanted to learn how to print cards. And these are two examples of cards that we've made that Eunice has designed and they're printed on old fashioned printing presses. So she used to make these all herself and now we have a business in Oregon that prints, they, they print um, the cards for us. They're a company called Egg Press. So we started doing that and then we started writing children's books. And our very first children's book that we ever made was this book called My Mom is Magical. And it's all about how magical mom is and mom is a unicorn. And there's all kinds of cool pictures comparing mom to a school of owls and all kinds of other things. We did a book like that for dads. And with all of these books, I wrote the words and Eunice drew the pictures. This one's one for little kids called Super Pooper and Whiz Kid Potty Power. And it's a funny, <laughs> funny book all about teaching kids how to use the potty instead of going in their diet. Because what isn't funny about pooping and peeing, really? Exactly. We wrote <laughs> the book Kindness Rules, which is this guy's name is Magic Manners, and he's a superhero who brings kindness to all different situations. For example, when he is having a meltdown, he slows down and uses his words. So that's a fun book that we did. We also wrote this book called I Believe in You, which is all about a unicorn and a little dragon who wants to learn to fly. We wrote this book called Go Get Him Tiger, which is just a really encouraging book about this tiger who's going through all kinds of ups and downs in life and really finding his way. And we wrote this book called Thanks a Ton, which is all about a little elephant who cannot find the words to say thank you. So instead of writing a thank you note, he gives all kinds of funny things to his friend, like a St. Bernard and a gorilla and an alligator. It's very, very funny. So those are some examples of the books that we've written. And we're excited now to share with you our newest book. You are fantastic. So before we, before I read this to you, we're going to do a little brainstorming because you know, I sent you a text. I'm, I'm doing an event right now. Hi, Mari. You need to be muted. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to, as we, right, as I'm reading this, Eunice is going to be drawing. And um, when we're, when she's drawing, she is going to be, um, you're going to be able to watch her on her screen and she's going to share a little bit about that so you can see how it is that she makes these awesome, awesome pictures that are in our books. Um, but usually when we do this in person with kids, we brainstorm with you. Well, what should this little llama be doing? So this book, the idea behind this book is all about how you are fantastic and how you are more amazing than just think about the most amazing, more, most incredible, magical, fun thing you can imagine. And we, we all the pictures are comparing this little llama to all the amazing things. Like here, we've got a troop of tigers. So let's <laughs> start by doing a little brainstorming of what are the most favorite things and most amazing things that you can think of that you would like to be compared to, or that you would like to compare someone you really love um, too. So it might be like, you know, a pile of ice cream cones or you know, some of your ideas. I do love to draw ice cream, especially ice cream with little smiley faces on them. <laughs> oh, so many possibilities. I mean, is the llama an astronaut going to the moon? So more adventurous than an astronaut. Uh, what else? I mean, I really love to draw puppies lately. Like Sabrina has a new puppy, which is, who is very hilarious named Loki, who has been a little bit of an amuse of late in terms of funny dogs. So, and I love to dance. So I'm kind of thinking maybe what about a dancing llama who's dancing with a troop of puppies? That could be really funny. Um, what else? What else? Mm, popsicles. I'm always a fan of drawing popsicles. 
Are you cooler than a million popsicles, maybe? Or what about you, Sabrina? Any other ideas? You're the, I, you're the I, wordsmith. I love those. Um, so when we were writing this, what the way that I wrote it was thinking about, okay, what are some things I really love? And then what are some adjectives that relate to that? So if it's popsicles, like Eunice said, it'd be popsicles are cold and being cool is like a pretty cool thing to be. So <laughs> you are cooler than a million popsicles. And then I also was thinking about a measurement word there, like a million or a billion or a gazillion or a ton or a pile. So that's kind of how we came up with this book. So like a big pile. So a, And then alliteration is when two, the words start with the same letter. So a pile of puppies, that makes it really fun to read. So Very let's, satisfying to say. Very satisfying to say. So I would, I mean, I love flowers. So I imagine like a field of flowers. I also love um, swimming pools, you know, so maybe it's, it's like a billion swimming pools or maybe <laughs> it's hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate. So a giant, you are warmer than a giant mug of hot chocolate. We also love marshmallows, which are in here. So you are more, more sweeter than a, a pile of marshmallows or a mountain of marshmallows, which I think is actually in there. So those are some ideas. So um, I think Eunice, we should go with the puppies though. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm in puppy mode today. Up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling so, puppy mode. Okay, so Eunice is gonna draw the llama cuddling so maybe cuddlier than a pile of puppies and there are puppies in here too. i feel like we're gonna we're gonna dance because we did i think cuddling oh. is, is in the book so let's do okay. dancing just to change it up okay so you are funnier than a that funnier than a what is it like a club of puppies or club oh of interesting puppies? yes a club of <laughs> dancing puppies do we need d words you are you are, you are more fabulous. <laughs> Dynamic. What about more dynamic? How about more dynamic than or yeah. more um, more? What's another D word that's fun to say? More well, daring is not really. How about more? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's daring to be a good to dance. You're putting yourself okay. out there. Dance okay. like nobody's oh. watching, right? <laughs> oh, totally. Okay, so yeah, dancing does take courage, especially for those of us who are more courage. Shy. Okay, how about you? Left feet over here. Yes. How about you're more daring than a dozen dancing puppies? <laughs> I'll try. I'll try to cram 12 puppies. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how far I get with the actual dozen. <laughs> okay, so this is how it works. Eunice and I go back and forth and we brainstorm ideas, and she's like, I don't think I can draw a dozen dancing puppies. How about a duo of dancing puppies, which is two. Anyway, so Eunice is going to do her thing. And then sometimes I change the words of the book to respond to right. what you when, when I When I don't cooperate and don't yeah. end up putting a dozen puppies in, then she has okay. to get creative. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read this now. Eunice is going to go off and draw, and then she's going to come back right. and we're gonna check in on her once she's done. So and just a little background, the reason why we wanted to write this book, as Mari alluded to, sometimes things are hard, right? Sometimes we have meltdowns or things don't go our way or we're really not feeling that great, right? And the thing that we want to always remember is that in here we are, we are infinitely valuable, we are infinitely lovable, that the essence of who you are is fantastic no matter whether you're having a bad day or not you really truly the real you deep down under underneath the meltdown or the bad day you are fantastic and you must never ever forget that truth okay because it's true you are it doesn't matter what anybody tells you you are fantastic and that's even though you make mistakes and you need to learn from them and we all you know we, that happens to all of us underneath it all this is very true okay so we're going to read this book now that's why we wanted to write this book is just remind everybody of that that very important fact okay you are fantastic story by moi pictures by eunice all right you are more lovable than a ton of puppies there they are there's our llama just in a pile of puppies just getting so many cuddles and so much love cooler than a pile of penguins there's our lovely little llama just sliding down an iceberg with a pile of penguins they're all having so much fun and they are chilly willy because they're out in the arctic they are cool more creative 
than an ace inventor. Oh my goodness, there is our little llama and sh and she or he, it could be a boy or girl or we don't really know. That little llama is making a really cool invention. If you know what a Rube Goldberg invention is, and this is kind of like that. It's got all kinds of things that she's using to make something go, including a windmill, a banana, a funnel, some socks, some polka dot and underwear, balloons, bicycle wheels, marbles. She's got all kinds of things that she is making into a cool contraption funnier than a flock of flying pigs. There they are. And our little llama is just swinging from a kite, flying up in the clouds with these hilarious flying pigs. And I especially love the pose of that one. That, that little pig is having an awesome time flying through the air. All right. Smarter than a billion books. There's our little llama. And that little llama is cozying up in a cozy reading chair with piles and piles and piles of books. And this reminds me of how much I love going to bookstores and just cozying up and looking around, also going to libraries, just to see all the new books that are there and just explore its whole world. And it is so cool. And it does make you smart to read books. So read tons of books. Wilder than a troop of tigers. And here you're seeing Eunice's love of dance come out because these tigers are wild, and not only are they wild, they are hula hooping. And this little llama is doing a little what, a dance move known as a twerk, where she's kind of shaking her bum and, uh, and just having an awesome time with her hula hoop. Sweeter than a mountain of marshmallows. That's right, this came up earlier. It's not just marshmallows, but in the background you can see piles of what I think might be whipped cream, which I love as well. And lots of rainbows in there, maybe some candies and sprinkles. And there's our llama giving that marshmallow a big squeeze. More amazing than a million moonbeams. And there's our llama, it's twilight. And the mama is prancing along with her friends, the penguin, the narwhal, the tiger, and the flying pig under the glow of this beautiful moon. And if you're ever outside under a full moon, you know how good that light of the moon feels. It is just has this magnetic energy. You are brilliant, incredible, one of a kind. The only you we'll ever find. And there's our llama with all, actually llama's not in this picture. They're all looking for llama. Tiger is looking with a magnifying glass. Narwhal's looking. Puppies are all sniffing the ground looking. And this little penguin has a telescope looking. They're looking for the only you they'll ever find. And that's our little llama. You are fantastic. And the little bunny says, I love you. And this book is dedicated to you. There you go. That book is You Are Fantastic. And now let's check in with Eunice and just see how her drawing is going. We're going to look at her sketching. Hello. Oh All God. right. So I'm adding some puppies here. And let's see. So I do all of my drawing actually on the iPad. I used to do it on paper, but I hate to say it, doing it on the iPad makes it a lot easier. Cause for example, if I make this puppy and put it in the wrong place, I can just be like, whoop, I'm just gonna move it instead of, you know, having to dig out my eraser, et cetera. But, but yes, yeah, so we're getting there, we're getting there. Cool. So what kind of dance is this llama doing, do you think? Well, she is wearing a tutu. <laughs> and she has point shoes on, but um, I don't think she's really doing ballet to you. <laughs> she's shaking her booty. I don't know. Let's see. I feel like I'm I love add, those puppies. Uh, they look like they're having so here. much fun. I'm I'm messing with your whole duo thing. I'm gonna add a puppy up here. Cool. I have I have the urge to draw uh, like a something. Let's see. Let's make it like a like a wiener dog dachshund sort of situation but maybe he's gonna have really long floppy ears. Well, I guess they have long floppy ears. I'm gonna make them have crazy long floppy ears. Look, I'm gonna give them some long, super wiggly ears because <laughs> I just think it looks funny. I just think it looks funny. 
It is awesome. They're I flying through the air, his ears. This is how enthusiastic he is about his dancing. This is great. I <laughs> love imagining what kind of music they could be dancing to. I think that if, if kids are watching this, maybe after this reading, they can just put some music on and have a dance party. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love the spontaneous dance party. We're a big <laughs> fan of living room dance party at, at my house. My kids really like to play music at 45 RPM just to make us all insane. <laughs> so like, 45 it's like RPM. A ham hamster music, we call it. <laughs> exactly. Well, so Eunice, while you're drawing this, I'm just going to ask a question that I know a lot of kids will be asking or thinking like, wow, how did she get to be such an amazing artist? Oh, so what, practice, how did you get practice, to be so practice, good? Practice. Practice. So much practice. Well, I just drew all the time. I think my dad, oh, our dad always has a story about how he realized that I might enjoy art when uh, he came home one day and I was drawing, I was watching, I guess, a ballet show on PBS and, uh, oh, I think I'm gonna add a little, another dog over here. Um, and uh, I was drawing a little row of ballerinas just on the side of my, um, my like milk container for markers. And so after that, he started buying me art supplies and uh, or both of them did really both our parents and they always really encouraged me to draw um and i also oh one thing then one thing they did when i was little which helped a lot i thought was that every night our dad would read us a story usually it was actually more of a grown-up book not even a kid's book and with chapters and every night i was to draw he gave me a sketchbook and i would draw you did this too didn't you and i would draw i did too um, but i had a tendency to just fall asleep you yeah, were like you fell asleep all the time <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I would draw, I would illustrate the story every night. And I think that is a lot of where my illustration came from is that every night I just would illustrate, you know, whatever we're reading the bio, I remember illustrating the biography of George Washington and drawing George Washington with wooden dentures <laughs> was one I remember doing and uh, that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, but I mean, mainly it was just drawing all the time. Like I just drew and drew and drew and drew. I went to art school, but I think really more of it came from just constantly trying new things and also looking around at what other people are doing, what other artists uh, ha have done and, and old artists, but also like people my own age and, um, you know, and just getting ideas for different ways to draw things and different techniques, like trying, you know, painting or um, sadly, I'm really, really lazy about cleaning up. I hate cleaning up. So painting was not my jam because it involved too much cleaning up, um, which is why I love the iPad because the iPad, it's like, doing Minecraft instead of playing Legos, you know, on the one hand, I love Legos, but boy, I really like not having to step on those things <laughs> by accident. <laughs> so when my kids want to play Minecraft, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of okay with that. You go play some Minecraft. It's cool. <laughs> so what do you think about copying other people's art versus making your own from scratch? Oh, well, first of all, I mean, you don't want to copy anybody because obviously like that's not very original, but that being said, I will say when I was little, I did a lot of copying, um, not, not to present it as my own work, but in as a way to learn style and technique. So, you know, if you find an illustrator you really like, there's totally nothing wrong with trying to draw like them in order to like build up your own drawing chops, right? Um, and then, but, but usually what I do or, or how I think my style sort of evolved is that I looked at lots of people, I practiced drawing lots of different ways and tried to imitate people that I really liked, et cetera, and so on. But then in the end, when I was making artwork to present to the world, that was where I would mash up everything that I liked about like tons and tons of different artists, all these artists that have influenced me over my entire life. So there's a little bit of like, you know, this person who draws a certain way or a little bit of that person and I mash it all together. And that's what makes my personal style um, so that it's not copying anybody else, but it's like putting your own like bit in there as well and creating your own original thoughts. But yeah, but I mean, but in terms of learning, like, you know, I, have, I think it's, it's great to copy other people and try to try to um, really like use that as a way to hone your skills. But you know, the main thing is just not to claim it's yours. <laughs> That's but, awesome. um, you know, every, every artist it learns by being influenced by other artists. I mean, there's very little in the world that's hundred percent original really. But you know, for I love how you've added tomorrow. a little bit of shading underneath their feet so that it looks more like there's a shadow under them. It looks more three dimensional. Yeah. It Ooh, looks really cool. How about and a little, little guy coming in from the side? Yeah, the little right. motion marks that, that look kind of like quotation marks kind of really get get the sense that they're moving. And that's pretty yeah. cool. Too. Totally. 
Totally. Awesome. But here, so here's this little guy. I like I like having people poking from the side, like like they're coming in for random commentary. <laughs> That's awesome. But, yeah, we always have lots of little like side characters appearing in our books. Fantastic. Well, I think this is pretty much done, right? Yep. Here we go. There it is. Fantastic. That is amazing. And for those who are watching, we are going, we send this, we'll, we'll send this sketch to your teachers so you can have a copy of it yourself. And if you want to finish coloring it, if you want to just add your own sort of flair to this drawing, you can. So this is something that hopefully your teachers will have if they have this video and they can print it out for you or email it to your parents and you can print it out at home if you have a printer and just do your own thing with it. So Mari, are there questions that um, kids have asked or that you you have perhaps as well that we can help answer? Well, first, everybody, we need to give both Sabrina and Eunice a huge round of applause because that was amazing. Um, thank you so much. Um, and I apologize again for being unmuted. We're trying to open this store at the same time as we're talking to you. Um, no. But um, I do have a question. Uh, because you lived internationally and um, because uh, maybe uh, you went to international schools, I actually taught at an international school a long time uh, ago, but a lot of my students spoke more than one language. So do you speak more than one language? Yes. So we grew up. Yeah, we grew up speaking Chinese at home as well as English, but we both also learned other languages in school. So we both learned French and Eunice, do you want to share a little bit about how? Sure. So I learned French in high school a little bit, and then I always really loved French design and I love Japanese design love, and all of that. But like French was sort of something that I was always really interested in. And so um, I continued to learn French as I was getting older and in college and so on and so forth here and there, nothing that serious. But then when my son was born, I went a little, you know, <laughs> over the top and decided that I wanted him to be bilingual too, because we were bilingual Chinese and English when we were growing up, but I never learned to read Chinese. So it was a little harder for me to teach somebody else that, but I had a little bit of French. And so I dove in and basically refused to speak English to my child. <laughs> for like the first two years of his life so his first language was actually French and not English and I was learning at the same time which is really funny so I learned French by reading children's books to him and watching children's tv shows and things in French and then taking lessons and all that and we ended up now now both of my kids speak French and they both go to a French it's a French public school and uh um here in San Francisco and then we actually lived in France for a year uh, a couple of years ago, we just picked everything up, moved to France and gave it a try. And, uh, and you know, I'm not sure that they love me for dropping them into French public school like <laughs> for a whole year, but it was fun. And I always think, you know, I think living outside the United States or traveling outside of the United States is a really wonderful way to experience other cultures and really see how other people live. And living in Europe is amazing because there's so many countries that you can travel to that are right next to each other. Unlike the United States where it's, you know, there's a real, it's a real effort to leave the United States or go somewhere where things are different. And there, there's a completely different culture right next door. I mean, it's a train right away usually. So that was a really wonderful experience, but yes, yeah, so. That's amazing that you're bilingual, trilingual. It's trilingual. incredible. And I meet students all the time and people who come in to Book Passage that are they're looking for books written in other languages so i was yeah. wondering if your books have been translated into other languages yes they have indeed and how they many have. languages how many languages have your books been uh, i believe into? at this point they have been translated into three or four languages chinese portuguese polish i want to say is that right yeah, i feel I like polish is one of them there's one yes. more, but I'm French? Not French yet, actually. <gasps> Honestly, French. What are you people doing? Come yeah. on now. <laughs> and do you do you do your own translations or does someone else do that for you? Someone else does it. And it always comes out really funny. Like, what is Sabrina? So in potty power, there's a phrase in Chinese, it's jayo, jayo, which means like add the gas, add the gas. Like it means hurry up. But I feel like in the English version, it's just something like hurry up. And in the Chinese version, it turned into jayo, jayo, like, which is yeah. really hilarious. So I always love seeing uh, how like these sort of idiomatic phrases, which are like, you know, phrases that make no sense literally, but, it, but sort of draw a picture of something for you. 
um, get uh, put in our books when they get translated. It's pretty well, funny. It's amazing. I love that. <laughs> um, another question that um, students have had is about the color choice. So a lot of the books on our shelves are very colorful, but yours are neon. Like they're very, <laughs> very vibrant, you know, like Eunice's background. But how did you choose your color palette? Because I know that's really important. Well, we're children of the 80s, so that's why neon, I love neon. <laughs> that was, when I was a teenager, that was all the rage. But it also, it's just like, it's such a fun, happy color, colors to work with. But I don't know, Sabrina, what do you think about our color choices? Yeah, I think so. I mean, in general, our the, the sort of idea behind all of our books is to promote kindness and positivity and optimism, hopefulness, compassion. And, you know, neon is just a really bright, vibrant, energetic, positive color. Like those colors are really, they have a lot of energy, you know? And so we just, that's why we love them, you know? And our books are funny. They're not too serious. And that's what we love about neon too. Neon is a very funny, kind of fun, playful color. Um, so we try not to have any of our, our books feel serious. They're, they're all pretty, <laughs> pretty lighthearted and fun and playful. Well, another thing that people have been looking for throughout the pandemic are books that you can read well over Zoom. Some are harder to read and see, but yours are just perfect to read over Zoom. So whether it's a grandparent or a parent reading to a child or a child reading to a grandparent or a younger sibling or cousin over Zoom, these books work so beautifully. So I don't know if you did that intentionally all those years ago, but it's they're really, really great. Uh, you know, to transfer through video. It's been really wonderful. Yeah, Another awesome. question though was, um, do what were your favorite books, chapter books uh, when you were little as kids? Not that were read to you, but that Ooh. you read. Chapter books. What do you think, Sabrina? Can you think, well, of awesome? think for a second? Yeah, I mean, I loved like Harriet the Spy, The House oh, of the Me Top too. Oh. I, mean, I, I had a Harriet Nancy the Spy Drew. club. Yes. Yes, yes. And I also loved, I personally loved the Lloyd Alexander series um, oh, yeah. of chapter books. Now it's so different because there are so many graphic novels. I think if those had existed when I was a kid, I would have loved those too. But um, those are some of the books that stand out. I also really loved this book um, called The Girl with the Silver Eyes, which is all about a girl who has telekinesis. I thought that was pretty awesome. I don't remember that one. Um, and then obviously, I think we, you know, in a, at a certain age, it was like the Judy Bloom books were really, you know, fun to read. Um, Encyclopedia Brown. Did you get into Encyclopedia Brown? I didn't so much, those but are, I choose your own adventure. Oh yeah, we used to love choose your own adventure books for sure. Yeah, so those are some chapter books. And then in terms of picture books, there were a lot of books that continue to inspire us today. So for example, there was this beautiful book called Tiger Flower that we both really loved. That was kind of surreal and that really inspired Go Get Him Tiger. Um, and then, you know, we love the sort of George and Martha books are hilarious. And I remember when Eunice and I were kids learning to draw, we would imitate the George and Martha characters and, and Jim Martha style. Um, so we love that. And we are both huge fans of the Calvin and Hobbes comic oh, books. We I love Calvin and Hobbes. Our kids read them. They're a huge source of inspiration for, for comedy in terms of the characters, physical, like physical expressions, as well as just the humor that appeals to all ages. So those are some other examples of books that we absolutely love. Well, that is wonderful to know. And what's interesting, I work at a library in addition to Book Passage, and I see so many kids coming in, like you, getting inspired by either other authors or illustrators, mm -hmm. and it's just amazing to see. Um, and then um, I wondered, do you keep an ongoing list of what, uh, what your next book ideas are going to be? We have so many. <laughs> there are so many, and yes, we do. So um, we work with a publisher. It's Abrams. Um, Abrams uh, Kids is our publisher. Appleseed. And, yeah, Appleseed. And so the way that I like to explain this to kids is they're kind of like our teacher, you know? So we have brainstorm ideas and we show it to our editor who's kind of like a teacher. And we also have a design director who's kind of like an art teacher, right? And we and we show them our ideas and we'll usually have a rough draft and they'll give us feedback. They'll say, yeah, you know, I think that idea is a really good one. Let's, let's, let's do that one. Or no, I don't think that one's really ready to be published. So we often, I'll keep a journal, we'll brainstorm ideas and we kind of pitch them or share those ideas with our editor and our design director pretty regularly. And then from our, those ideas, they'll pick the ones that they think are good. Um, and we publish four books a year, um, which is a lot, but that's, our, that's what we do. 
and they create a whole calendar of all of the books that we're publishing. So that's how it works. And yes, we we have a lot of ideas that never make it um, into mm -hmm. a real book. And that's and it's not book. always about whether or not the idea is good. Often it's also whether or not that subject has already been covered by a lot of books or you know, maybe they need something for St. Patrick's Day and they haven't seen anything cool out there and they would love to see something cool in the marketplace. So, you know, sometimes it also has to do with whether or not it's the right time or whether or not there's room in the market for another book about whatever topic as yeah. well. So interesting. The whole publishing business is just fascinating. And, and lots yeah. of kids are looking to be the next illustrators and authors. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it can he, happen. It was always yeah. my childhood dream. I never thought it would actually happen to me. And I thought, oh, well, that seems like very out of reach. But, you know, things happen and life happens and eventually it came along. So and I'm super stoked about it. <laughs> well, Sabrina and Eunice, it's been absolutely wonderful spending this time with you. We appreciate all your time. You both are so fantastic. Um, and then for <laughs> viewers, uh, we hope that you will either come into Book Passage, either here in Corte Madera or at the Ferry Building, or you can uh, find these books online. But we have lots, as you can see behind me, lots of Sabrina and Eunice's amazing books. Um, and so definitely come on in. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you all soon. Sabrina and Eunice, bravo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.